Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is not an e-trip. This is another dog walk and talk. <laughs> I did one of these a few weeks ago. It did reasonably okay. I think it had over 100 views. I mean, some of my e-trips have not even had 100 views, so I'll take that. That's not too bad, is it? In the grand scheme of things, in how difficult YouTube is, I mean, the platform itself has got, what, 2.5 billion people? Are consuming YouTube content and what's the population of the planet 8 billion nearly a third of the planet will watch YouTube which is one of the reasons why I'm not gonna quit on YouTube my tribe is out there the people who will connect with what I'm doing my historical e-trips the trips the days out if you watch what I do religiously you know what I'm talking about my e-trips and my days out where I'll go off and visit places whether it's further afield, um, you know, in, in Europe, I've done a couple out in Spain now, or whether it's a little bit more local on my doorstep, North Yorkshire, County Durham, Northumberland, Cumbria. I actually don't think I've done one in Cumbria yet. That's got to be on my radar soon. This is going to follow a similar um, style to, to what I did a few weeks ago, because I've just come back out of the gym again. And once again, I'm foolishly lifting the phone out to the side here just to, to get me in <laughs> and it's killing my arms three so I'm gonna to have to keep swapping it over I'm actually using the uh, the front camera the the selfie camera as it's called on the iPhone this is my new iPhone this is the iPhone 16 Pro that I'm recording on for the second time now the forbidden corner episode that I recorded a few weeks back that was recorded on the iPhone that was the first e-trip where I used my new iPhone to, to record that. I've actually had some good feedback on that. I got an email from the marketing team at the Forbidden Corner saying that they all watched the video and thought I'd captured it perfectly. So I'm on the right track, guys. If I keep doing that, keep getting the attention of these, you know, if I'm visiting places, the staff at these places, the marketing teams, the HR departments, whatever it is, if they're seeing the output that I'm putting onto YouTube and they like it, it's nice at the connect and let me know. I'm gonna keep swapping over. You're gonna keep seeing different views of me. This is the path at the back of my humble abode. And it's a very, very special magical path for me. <laughs> it's a path that literally from the back of my house, I'll come onto this footpath. Yeah, I'll show you it. I'll show you what this path is. Yeah, this path here, all roads lead to Rome. But in this case, no, all roads lead to my local hostillery, <laughs> the pub, which is where I'm heading. Just me and the Ella is coming with me. And I'm just going to have a, a wee drink on this crisp autumn day. It's been a lovely day today. For autumn, it's been really superb. The sun's been shining in the sky all day. Anyway, let's flick back to me. You don't want to see the path. I'm more important. So yeah, it's a magical path because <laughs> it goes straight to the pub. That's what I was uh, trying to sort of get across there. Um, yeah, I'm using the, the, the selfie camera. I'm looking at the camera now as I speak to you. I can see myself on the screen, but it's very hard to not look at that. Yes, in the world of video recording yourself on YouTube, if you use a smartphone or an iPhone like I am doing, I'm planning on continuing that, to be honest. Then you have two options. You can use the front facing camera. So the camera that's at the top of your screen. You know what I mean, the selfie camera, let's call it that. You can use that. That's the more logical camera to use. The only problem with that is, I mean, look at the difference here. I'm actually looking at the lens here. I've trained myself to stare at the lens and not the screen. Now see what happens if I actually look at the screen. So now I'm looking at the screen because that's where my eyes are naturally drawn to me talking but I'm not connecting with you. I'm not looking directly at you. So you have to look at the lens if you're gonna use this camera. That's a word to the wise there. Now, a way to get around that is to flip the camera completely and just use the back facing camera, which on an iPhone is the better camera. It's a better quality camera. That's where you've got the 48 megapixel camera. You've got the telephoto lens, the wide lenses on there. Um, so I should really be using that. And if I do that, then what I'll be doing is just staring at the Apple logo on the back of the phone. And then <laughs> as I'm walking around, 
it'll look bizarre because then everybody else will see me. If somebody walks past me while I'm doing this, they'll see me on the back of the camera, if that makes sense. Because I'll be looking at the back of the phone even though I'm looking at the, the better lens. But for now, this is recording in 4K, as I understand it, so it's, it's okay. I'm used to this, I'm used to this view, so I'll keep persevering with this view from now for, for the time being. And I've brought my little drone, my little Neo friend with me. Because the wind, I, I, since I bought this, I've been hampered severely by the British weather. I've only been able to get this thing out twice in, in all the time I've owned this, which is over a month now. I took it up to the w Winter's Gibbet, where it smashed into the gibbet and I nearly lost it. Um, and I've had it out once more on a beach, but it was just too windy. So I might actually show you what this can do. Um, it's, it's capable of producing high quality 4K video resolution. And it's, it's pretty impressive what this thing can do. I mean, it's a drone in my pocket. I've just carried this up here in my pocket. Um, but if I actually connect it, I can connect the microphone or my iPhone connects to the drone. So it will drown out the sound of the drone and you can still hear me talking. So I might actually, I might do that. I might give you a, 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 a brief introduction and a brief overview of what this is so you can see how beneficial it's going to be for some of my e-trips. I am planning on taking this into York at the weekend, but I've got to be mindful of the fact that I'm in a busy city centre. So the chance of being able to fly a drone in a built up populated area is probably slim to none. But if any of these translucent ghosts are in more open spaces, I know quite a few of them are in one of the parks. So if that's the case, I might get the drone up there. But anyway, this is what the drone looks like. This is the type of view that you get from the DJI Neo drone. So this is one of the views. This one's called Follow. Uh, the good thing with this drone is you don't even need to use it with... I'm using it with the mobile app. I'm controlling it through through the phone. But you don't even need to do that. There's, there's a button on the top that allows you to toggle through five or six various pre-programmed features such as this such as one where it shoots straight up like a rocket. I'm not a tech guy, so I'm not into the notion of explaining t this to you and all the various settings on it. You'll just see me using it for my e-trips, but it's a pretty cool piece of kit, if I'm really honest. This is the one. This is the one which I think I'll probably get most use out of. It's like the follow mode that you just saw, but in this, the drone stays in front of me, so I can talk while the drone stays out in front. Now, I think I'll use this one on the e-trips more than the actual any of the other features to be honest because this one to me is it's great you can see me you can see my surroundings you can see what's around it's a little bit noisy but because i've got the microphone phone well, i've got my dji mic plugged into my iphone connected to the camera so all you can do is all you can hear is me you can't hear the whirring of the rotors on the drone so this is cool I'm going to take this to York and I want this to be a central feature of a lot of the e-trips in future because it's just a wide, a wider scope. It's great. You get such a good view of me wandering around and I'm controlling it through the app on the phone. As I said, you can buy a separate remote, but I didn't need to. I just, I went for the cheaper option. I went to buy, I went in straight to buy just the drone itself. I bought an extra battery because the battery is not great. It only lasts about 19 minutes. So if you're gonna get one of these things, make sure you buy an additional battery. So you give yourself that extra recording um, battery life. It's amazing how it just stays in front of me. The only thing I will say, this doesn't have any kind of, ob it would crash into trees. It's got no obstruction, like it's just done here. It's hitting tree branches at the minute. So there's no sensor on it it to detect obstacles or things in the way but it's cool though isn't it are you all right wondering what i'm doing so that's it that's the drone so when i've powered it down and i've finished using it i literally just slide it into my pocket it's the definition of a pocket drone this thing so this coming weekend this well actually it is a weekend because it's going to be it's going to be saturday and sunday i'm heading into york into the city about an hour's drive from here because I want to do full justice to this this next e-trip this episode these ghosts in the garden display around York there's 45 of these translucent wire mesh ghosts 
that have been placed in various points around the city. Now, it would be remiss of me not to go and do an episode on this. It's right up my street. Now, the thing with these ghosts, because there are so many of them and every single one has an interesting backstory or a connection to the city of York. Now, I can't do a story on all 45. So what I am going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to pick about four or five of these ghosts and do a little bit of story connected to what you see. For instance, there's one in the shambles. Now, the ghost that's been put up in the shambles is of a butcher because the shambles used to be where the meat trade in York, it was the centre of the meat trade. So there's a lot of butcher's shops lined the shambles. So they've done that, they've connected the ghost to various parts of the city strategically to tell the story of York's glorious past. So I'll focus on maybe four or five of these ghosts and tell that story. But as well as that, I've got a bonus ghost story that I'm going to tell you. And it's probably one of York's most famous ghost stories. So it's going to be a very spooky, ghostly e-trip. It's the start of the spooky season, it's the start of Halloween. Sorry, I've just had to swap arms again. So throughout October, every e-trip that I put onto my YouTube channel will have a, a spooky, a seasonal vibe, let's say, starting with the Ghosts of York this weekend. Now I'm going to record on Saturday and Sunday, then I'll aim to try and get the episode up once I've edited it, got it, as, got it to the point where I'm really happy with it. Then I'll hopefully upload that into my channel on Monday or failing that Tuesday. Process behind one of these e-trips, when I actually record an e-trip, I'm not winging it. <laughs> I know it might look like that, but I do plan it and it is thought out. I script every episode so I know what I want to say and when I want to say it. So I do my research. I'm not just turning up, turning my camera on and just saying the first thing that pops into my head because that would be pretty dull. It'd be authentic, I get that, but I want to be able to tell you what I'm seeing. And if I, what's the point in going somewhere, somewhere historic, if I don't know the backstory to that, if I don't know what to tell you. So I do my research, I look into these places. Every e-trip I've been on, I've scripted out what I want to say and I've done my research into what I am saying because it makes it more interesting rather than just saying, well, that's an interesting old looking building. <laughs> it's far better for me to be able to get a bit factual and tell you exactly why that building is ancient, what it is, um, you know, what's the story, what's the connection to that. You get the drift. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. It isn't just a case of rocking up and pressing the big red button on the front of my iPhone and recording whatever happens. I do think, I do plan this out. And then post-production, once I've actually got all the footage, it then takes several hours of slicing and splicing and blending it all together in a semi-professional mode so it makes it interesting for you to watch. I put a lot of music to it, a lot of background music. There's obviously the main feature at the end of every episode which is the, the unique track um, which I think creates the, it creates the episodes if you ask me. I think it's nice to end each episode on a bit of a musical tribute to wherever I've been. Um, the forbid <sighs> I was really struggling to say a forbidden corner on camera last week. I just It's like a tongue twister, I don't know why. It shouldn't be forbidden, forbidden, but my brain doesn't compute it. <laughs> so the forbidden corner music track, I really liked it. I thought it just works. It works really, really well with the, the scenery, with the place. It captured the mystique and the magicness of the entire place, if you ask me. So I'll continue with these music tracks because I think it's a strong part of the e-trip. So all I'm trying to say is a lot of effort goes into these e-trips. I mean, from the planning, from the, the diligence that I have to do, from the research, then from the scripting out, practicing parts of the script, and then being on site, being live on site and actually then recording the episode and trying to be mindful of public if there's a lot of people around. Not everybody wants to be in, on a film, not everybody wants to be on YouTube. So you've got to be mindful of that in this day and age too. We've arrived at my public house. Well, it's not mine, but it's my local, if you know what I mean. The path literally leads to the pub. So if I spin the camera around just as the sun starts to set, Here's the path that I've literally just strolled 
meandered up this path for the past 15 minutes from my house. It's not as long, it's normally a 10 minute walk, but I've been slowly taking a snail's pace when I had the drone out, allowing Ella to have a good play around. And then we just go through this, I mean, Ella knows. I bring Ella out on a dog walk, and she instinctively goes through that gap, because she knows nine times out of 10, that's where we end up. <laughs> A dog walk. Is a dog walk a euphemism for me now? It just means taking the dog to the pub. Honey, I'm taking the dog for a walk. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> Is it too cold to have a pint outside? I don't think so. I'm going to go for it. Oh shit, what's a free house? Free beer. I think I'm in the same location I was a couple of weeks ago when I did this walk and talk. So, cheers guys. I've got an appropriately named pint of Ghost Ship Ale. You have to, don't you? It's a spooky season after all. So the next time you see one of my videos, it will be the e-trip from York, from the 45 translucent ghosts from York. And I'm really excited to, to tell this story. It's not a story as such, it's just showing you these, these ghosts but there are stories connected to that and I will add in five little micro stories. I'll pick five ghosts to home in on and to focus on, but I will try and get round all 45 ghosts. I might not tell you the story of all 45, but I'll certainly get all 45 into the episode. That's the plan anyway. I'm heading there on Saturday with Lara, with my daughter. She's gonna sort of scout around with me and we're gonna try and film all of these ghosts and at the various locations. There is a map, there is a map you can pick up, there's a map online. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem to find where they've placed these ghosts. But as I say, when it comes to actually telling the story, I'll choose five of them to focus on. And I think it will make a really nice start to the spooky season here.